Hi, BIF family. I, uh, I hope that this week is proving to be a very uh, meaningful and uh, spiritually enriching week for you as you contemplate and think about the, the incredible way that 2,000 years ago, uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, died on that cross. He was buried for our sins, and then he rose on the third day. And uh, that God is working in your heart and your life to see that those events, those, those real events that happened 2,000 years ago, really have a, an application. They have a, an impact upon how you live your life day in and day out. This week on Tuesday, I was in my, my regular reading, reading through the, the scriptures in a year. And Tuesday's psalm reading was Psalm 57. Verse 2 says this, I call to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. And as I thought and meditated about that, I thought, boy, I, I thought I was coming here to Baku to fulfill some purpose that God had for me. And boy, this past year has been very different than I thought that the purpose of, purposes of God were for, for my heart and my life. And very strange. And I, I began wondering, you know, well, am I really confident that, that God's purposes are being fulfilled in my heart and my life, even though it's very different than what I thought it should be? And I, I think a lot of you are in that same boat, as it were. It's, we had this past year where things didn't go the way we thought they would go. But are we confident that God's purposes will be fulfilled in our hearts and our lives? Well, down a few verses later, in verse 7, David said this. And, and recognize that David is in a, in a difficult situation when he's writing these things. He's certain that God will fulfill his promises and his purposes. And verse 7 says, my heart is confident. God, my heart is confident. To have that kind of confidence that David had. How, how did he get to that point, even though the circumstances and situations of life were were not all that he thought they should be or, or could be. He, he wasn't sure about God's promises and his purposes being fulfilled, but he says, my heart is confident. He hadn't seen any of the evidence around, but he said, my heart is confident. Why? How did he get that confidence? How did God instill that confidence in him? Well, it goes on, verse 7. I will sing. I will sing praises. Wake up my soul. Wake up, harp and lyre. I will wake up the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. You see, I, I think a lot of the confidence that we have that God will fulfill his purposes for us is, is gained when we articulate, when we proclaim, when we testify to the goodness of God in our lives. It, it builds our confidence as we talk about the, the good things, the way God has impacted our lives. And sometimes it takes some work, it takes some time to dig deeper into our souls to see the goodness and the, the greatness of, of God and his, his love and his faithfulness to us. And so that's what this week is to be about. It's, it's to slow down. One of the keys to good discipleship of, of growing more and more like Jesus is simply to slow down to stop and to ponder and to think. I, I was on a, a run on uh, Tuesday morning and uh, I read this uh, earlier and was out and, and on my run, I, I got tired and uh, I just decided to sit down for a while and, and I just sat down and just went deeper. I, 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 just, I didn't rush through my run, uh, but I took some time and I contemplated the goodness and faithfulness of God. And, and in those moments, it increased my confidence that God indeed will fulfill his purposes for me. And I want that for you. And so that's one of the reasons why we encourage you to think about this one phrase, filling in a, a blank with 10 words or less, because the grave is empty, I blank. I hope you've been thinking about that, and I'm, I'm sending this out to remind you that we want you to think and, and go deeper. Take some time to, to really think, because the grave Jesus' grave is empty. My life is different. How is it different? How has God met you in your life this week and in your lifetime? How have you seen his faithfulness because the grave is empty? So in 10 words or less, complete this sentence. Because the grave is empty, I blank, fill it in. 
Now, some of the great minds of the Baku International Fellowship got together this morning. They invited me along, and uh, we, uh, we talked about how we're going to uh, work this out technically. This is going to be a Zoom uh, worship gathering on Sunday morning, and we're thinking, like, how is this going to work with, uh, with the mics and the different ways that this works? And so there's a couple things that we would ask you to do. Uh, first of all, if you have something in mind, and I pray that all of you do, that you would just quickly give me an email, tfeather at sbcglobal.net, and let me know that, that you're planning on giving that testimony, that 10-word testimony on Sunday morning. Um, that way we'll have a, a list of people right at the beginning of, of those who, who are ready to, uh, to uh, give this proclamation and to sing praises before the peoples. And think about this, where else can you sing your praises before all the nations when we have such a, a multinational fellowship? It's a great opportunity to fill that, fulfill that verse that David talks about. And then on Sunday morning, uh, you'll note that on the Zoom screen, there's a, a little box that says chat. And if you click that on, you'll get a, a thing on the, the side of your uh, screen that'll be a chat box. And you can click on there that uh, you'd like to personal message Neil. And what you'll be able to do is personal message Neil and just say, Neil, I have a testimony. That's all you need to say. Um, and then while we are going through that, um, maybe click on your, there's another place where it says reactions. And you can click reactions and kind of wave your hand. It has a place where you can wave your hand. And, and when we're doing that, Neil will be able to see you and click you in and turn your mic on and you'll have that. And, and really, it only takes five, 10 seconds to say those 10 words. Uh, so it, we want to try to keep that, keep it moving. And um, there'll be some mistakes. There'll be some technical glitches and things like that, but that's okay. Uh, the point is you get to articulate your praise and your worship to God. And we have this time to to exchange and talk to one another in that format. So uh, I hope that you'll really take this to heart. I hope that every one of you tunes in on Sunday and uh, has a, an expression of praise and thanksgiving and glory to God because the grave is empty, your life has been changed and it's different. Before we get to Sunday though, we go through Good Friday. And Good Friday will be a, a service uh, that'll begin at seven o'clock. It will be a, a video premiere I'm working on a message that talks about the, the unexpected power of God. We're looking at Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 through 54. Uh, we're looking really at the, at the moment of Jesus' death, what all happened, because Matthew records some significant things that, that have meaning for us in our, our lives. And so uh, be, uh, be reading that ahead of time and praying about God meeting your heart and your life and, and the lives and hearts of other people in the church as well. And then we'll conclude that uh, service with a time around the, the Lord's table. And so prepare by getting ready the juice and the bread and, uh, and, and looking forward to that special holy time of God's church uh, sitting down uh, to feast with the, with the Savior. One other thing I want to mention to you, uh, we are working on a, um, and planning actually, a, a men's retreat. Um, April 23 and 24, I think it is, that we're looking at. We've targeted, we've actually uh, made some arrangements with a facility, and uh, we, uh, we can accommodate up to 30 men at this, uh, at this uh, venue. Um, but uh, men, uh, be thinking about that, praying about that. If you have questions, you can talk to Ryan or Neil or me. Um, we'll get some information, more information out to you later. But uh, I wanted to uh, pour, sort of throw that out to you so that you could be ready and uh, be looking forward and thinking about uh, what uh, we might be able to do as men uh, in uh, this next month. I, I look forward to uh, seeing and being with you on uh, Friday night and uh, then on Sunday morning. Have a, a continued blessed Holy Week uh, with uh, walking with Jesus and blessing you and blessing others as you walk through this life. God bless.